today we've been asking the question, what would you do? For more than a decade, our next guest, John Kionis, has been asking that very question as the host of the hugely popular ABC Hidden Camera series that I'm obsessed with, What Would You Do?, where everyday people are confronted with situations that force them to make a split-second and often surprising decision. After taking a three-year hiatus, the show is back, and we've got a clip. What would you do if you were working out and saw a gym creeper snapping pictures? Take a look. She's really keyed in. Hey, excuse me, uh, are you a model? Uh, no. Well, have you ever been photographed before? Um... I have a studio down the street. I'd love to photograph you. Uh... $500. I don't know. I just came to work out and... That's what attracted me to you. I thought maybe we could, uh, do a little photo shoot together. Come on. It'd be fun. You only live once, right? Um... I'm okay. I... I'll tell you what. I'm gonna go get my equipment. Don't go anywhere, okay? I'll be right back. Oh, what would you do? Please welcome ABC News correspondent, fellow Texan, seven-time Emmy Award-winning legend, John Keone! Oh, you're beautiful. Thank you. tell you welcome to the show Hello. in person good to be here what would that little kid in san antonio oh, can you imagine what would he have thought of this life yeah, that you I mean, live i grew up in the look barrio. at him <laughs> oh, look <there> he is. <laughs> wait do you remember the patrol badge oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah that was me back then eight years old um i you know grew up in the barrio uh, Tough neighborhood. Your didn't father speak, was a janitor. Your mama mom made houses. Yeah, yeah. and we—I uh, didn't speak English when I was six years old, and now I make a living speaking English on American television. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah those, those are my mom and dad. Yeah. Uh, they're the best. They're great. Uh, Maria and Bruno. One of the things that is so wonderful about you, other than your family and your story, you are naturally curious about people, and I think that mm. comes from who you are at 13, you travel like 1,700 miles yeah. to Michigan yeah. to pick Cherries. cherries. Uh -huh. The cherry uh, capital of the world. The cherry, you know, so you're a child worker. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you have this rich culture and rich history, but you're curious about people. Yeah. And that's why this series works, because I can see your handprint on it. Yeah, and I've been there. I mean, I know what it feels like. In many ways, I feel like I was destined to do this show, What Would You Do?, because of where I come from and because of what I went through myself. When we would pick tomatoes in Ohio and on Sundays when we would be off from work, we'd go to the store to buy a burger somewhere, an ice cream, and people would follow us around thinking we're going to steal something yeah. or would make faces at us because, you know, I spoke with a funny accent. You know, I would say, these are my chews, this is my chart, because in Spanish there is no SH sound, yeah. so I had to learn all of this. But I can relate. And those are the people who step up, the real heroes on what would you do time and again are people who have been through it themselves. Right. They know what it's like, so they sound the alarm. Well, I love it also because it tests your reflexes of right and wrong. I mean, that gym mm -hmm. scene. Yeah. I, can't, I mean, my heart started racing, and I'm like, okay, what would I do? Yeah, the gym creeper. The gym creeper, right? <laughs> and I, and you're sitting there. I love with the way these play out yeah. because it does. These aren't just these. These go to your moral compass sometimes, and it makes you think, God, I don't know what I would do sometimes. I don't know if I'd want to confront that guy because I don't want a confrontation or. You know, would I just go and call 911? What would I do sure. if I saw her in that situation? I created the show 16 seasons ago. Crazy. Because we wanted to hold up a mirror to American society. We wanted to know how do you unlock the power and the light that exists in each and every one of us so that we're all better equipped to say, hey, that's wrong. Right. Or how can I help? How can I help, yeah, right? I agree. And I think that's the great point of the show. It doesn't always mean that you have to jump into action and tackle someone, but you do figure out a way, how can I help in this situation? I'm so flattered that your children are in the yeah. audience here. <laughs> you have three kids. This is Nico and Andrea. Yeah. Julian is not here. But 
When you look at your body of work, uh -huh. and I know that you and Nico were in Uvalde, we went to Uvalde as well uh, um, yeah. to cover the tragedy there. When your body of work, like what would you do, mm -hmm. um, speaks to culture and your kids have an opportunity to yeah. be influenced by this, that has to feel just great. Absolutely. As well. They have such compassion, they have such great hearts. Nico has worked on Uvalde, yeah. and, and, but Andrea has worked on Teen Mom and yeah. 16 and Pregnant and tells the stories. Of, of young girls and how difficult it is to raise a child when you are barely a teenager. Julian, my oldest son, works at CNN and he does all the climate stories, so he travels all over the world warning us about the dangers of global warming. Uh, so I'm very proud of them because they have a good I, well, conscience. You, I can see you beaming with pride and all along I'm sitting here going, would you like a four child named Mo Moses because you do a great <laughs> job. I mean, you've done a heck of a job parenting. I need some what would you do tips. So if four. a four year old comes in <laughs> yeah. uh -huh. and they say, no, I what am. What would you do? Yes, <laughs> what would you do, John Keones, who's raised three remarkable children? <laughs> I would tell his mom to take care of it. <laughs> <laughs> when we come back, we'll talk more with John. He's staying with us, and we're putting some sticky situations to the test. We're asking the Tam Fam, what would you do? <laughs> Everybody what will people do when they witness this kind of job discrimination? I'm very professional and my hair is clean. I don't understand how you expect my hair to be. Uh-oh, she's getting a better angle. This has nothing to do with my experience or my qualifications. It's like it's dinner and a show suddenly. Your hair, it's a little wild. I'm just wondering if it will come off as hygienic. <sighs> Wow. Welcome back. That was a sneak peek at ABC's What Would You Do, hosted by award-winning ABC News correspondent John Keonis. Tune in this Sunday, 10 p.m. Eastern, mm -hmm. to see what they do in that situation. You've got two special correspondents yeah. on the show. Yeah, Bell. Who's and in Sarah a... joining. Haynes. Yeah, yeah. Haynes. So last year, you were inducted into the TV Academy prestigious Gold Circle, an yeah. exclusive honor society that recognized the best and the brightest uh, in our that, industry. Uh, okay, so now that's my wife. That's Dallas your beautiful native. wife. Yes, yeah, you look she's so beautiful. An emergency room nurse, uh, oh, Deanna. Look at this family. family. <laughs> wow. Great. All right, so we have. We have John here, so we have to take advantage of. We've pulled a couple of what would you do type situations that mm -hmm. have gone viral mm -hmm. and to ask members of our audience what they would do. Let's start this viral TikTok. It's been seeing 24 million views on social media. This woman shared what she would do if asked to split the check 50 50 on a first date. Take a look. Uh -huh. When a man wants to go 50 50 with you on a date, do this. <clears throat> oh my God. I'm so embarrassed right now. Um, Wait, you wanted to just be friends? I'm so confused. This whole entire time, I thought this was a date. Oh my God. Okay, I'm so sorry. Here's my card. Ooh. Oh, wow. Okay, uh, we have Mary and her mom. Brenda, what would you do if someone said split it on the first date? First of all, my mom raised a very independent woman. Woo! Yes, right. I did. I raised her to be independent, self sufficient, and make good decisions. Absolutely. So I would definitely go 50 50. Right. I would pay my portion of the bill, call the Uber, and never call him again. Because <laughs> it's, more, it's more to this. Because mama didn't raise no fool. Oh my God. <laughs> Next up, what would you do moment? It went viral. Uh, friends at a birthday dinner, should you split the check or just pay for what you ordered? Let's show the video. I'm only paying for what's on the check. I'm not splitting the bill, Shawty. That's crazy. You expect us to split My the bill? Is, you got lamb chop. You got steak. You got some other Look at all that. Look at what all they got. They talking about splitting the bill. What did you come out for? Yeah, what did you come out for? We hung together with the bill. So <laughs> okay. So, listen. We had to blur the names out because none of those people speak to each other anymore. <laughs> so we had to blur their faces. They are all still mad. What do you think here, Erin, from Rio Grande Valley? Oh, hey, Hi. Texas. Um, I think that you should pay your own way because if you're ordering the $80 lamb chop yeah. and I'm ordering the $20 hamburger, why should I be paying equally? So I agree with that video. Maybe not as aggressively, I agree. but... I agree. <laughs> I agree. So, 
John, mm -hmm. when we go out to when we go out to celebrate mm -hmm. the uh, new season of What Would You Do? Yes. And I order a lobster, mm -hmm. and we're out with Nico and Andrea and Julian <laughs> and the family. Do I have to pay, or do you pick up the tab? No, you got me on your show. I got to pay for you.